Um, so we'll start with um, roll call. Um, Emma Cornwell. Oh, she's connecting to audio. I wonder if she's muted. Thank you for she is right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give her one second. Hello, Emma. Hi. There you are. I, sorry, I was just doing roll call. That's why I was, I was waiting. So you are here. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Okay. I'm here. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Linda Kekos. Here. Rodney Kunas. Rodney. <laughs> Hello. Um, Kathy, oh, sorry. Councilor Mary on the barge. Here. Kathy Murray? Here. Marilyn Clare? I don't see Marilyn. She sometimes comes a little late though, so maybe she'll maybe she'll be here. Okay, Amy Sugihara? Here. Awesome. And I am here too. Um, so we'll start with public comments. <laughs> um, it looks like Jacob's here. Um, would you like to say anything, Jacob? Hi. Um, uh, I think that there's the on the agenda discuss sidewalk assessment and prioritization. So I don't really have anything new to say. Uh, okay, cool. We we maybe you can add to the conversation when we get to it if you want to. Okay, great. Okay, cool. So next we'll. Uh, uh, Jeremy. It looks oh, like sorry. Go ahead. Keith. Has his hand up. Oh, sorry, Ben. I didn't see yeah. it. You don't often comment. Problem. So yeah. I don't often, but I wanted to let everyone know that um, the Forbes Library Accessibility Advisory Board serves a very similar role to the Disability Commission, but for the public library, mm -hmm. um, helps guide library policy, inform the direction we take um, with um, disability and accessibility in mind. We have our next meeting scheduled. That is going to be January 12th at 3 p.m. Um, I will put um, a link in the um, chat, um, but it will be um, both online and in person. So it's a hybrid meeting. So folks that prefer can come here to the library and folks that prefer this type of Zoom environment can join us on Zoom. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Ben. I will hopefully, I'll try to attend that myself. At that point, I will no longer be chair of the commission also, so. I'll be doing everything I can to try to keep up with what's going on. <clears throat> okay. Um, next we're, is the approval of the previous minutes from October 10th and November 14th. Is that right, Keith? We had we not we had we hadn't approved October yet. Correct. Okay. Motion to approve. Should we do them both at the same time or separate? Do you think, Keith? I uh, do both at uh, uh, different times, please. Different times. Okay. Motion to approve um, October 10th minutes. Move to approve. Okay. Motion. Okay. So that's um, okay. So we um, will take a quick vote on that. Um, Emma Cornwell. Uh, yes, I approve. Okay. Linda. Yes. Rodney. Please. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Kathy. Yes. And Amy? Yes. Okay. And is there a motion to approve the minutes from November 14th? To approve. Okay. I'll second that motion to approve. Um, Emma? Yes, I approve. Linda? Yes. Rodney? Okay. Council of the Barge? Yes. yes. Uh, Kathy? Yes. Amy? Yes. Awesome. <clears throat> um, let's see. Um, next on the agenda is membership minutes. Um, mm -hmm. What does that mean, Keith? Exactly, I forget. Membership minutes. 
Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, there are two vacancies on this book. Oh, right. Yes. Yes. Um, and so if you, anyone knows people that have other disabilities, um, we try and, you know, I think um, um, there's some opportunity to have a different voice. Um, I think personally, I learned a lot from just our interaction on, on the movie uh, screening about um the, the woman that was um uh, blind Can you talk louder and, please yeah um so i think um there's some opportunity to ask if around in the community if there's people with other disabilities uh, like vision impairment or some point or um you know uh, sensory um 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 things uh, you know, I think what we saw from the the movie is, uh, I mean, just personally, there's a lot of learning just of how people interact with the movie, um, you know, with the, the described audio. Um, so if you know someone that um, would be willing, uh, you know, they should come to the meeting and get to learn uh, about the disability mission. And um, yeah, I think that's it. <clears throat> But and then the the chair and the vice chair. Um, that yeah, was that's it. yeah, yeah. The other component of that was, um, uh, as you all know, uh, Jeremy has been voted to city council. Uh, so uh, I think the next meeting he will already be sworn in for city council. So Emma will be the acting uh, chair, and so for this meeting uh, we're taking nominations for chair and vice chair. And in the January meeting, we would vote on the loss. Congratulations, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> I'm very excited about Good it. Morning. Thanks, Rodney. And and I'll keep coming to the meetings and keeping up with everything. And and then I'll do what I can as city councilor to uh to help out. That's the plan. <laughs> Woohoo. Yeah. Yes. He's is there be any? Busy. <laughs> What's that? I said Are there any nominations? Busy, Jeremy. Oh yeah, I'll definitely be busy. Yeah. It's a different uh, world. <laughs> uh -huh. looking, looking forward to it. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah. So like uh, Keith said, there'll be two vacancies in January. So reach out to anybody that you know about when about applying to the commission. And um, so do we want to do the nominations for chair and vice chair? Mm. And Keith, I was going to ask, um, do I have to like recuse myself mm -hmm. from this completely? Like, or I'm not really sure how that works. Uh, I, I think you can nominate someone. I don't see a problem. Okay, cool. All right, well, um, let's see. Does anybody have any nominations? Mm. <clears throat> Emma? I want to nominate Amy as chair. Awesome. Yeah. I'd like to nominate Emma Cornwell as vice chair. Can I do that? All right. If if you didn't, Jeremy, I would. Okay, awesome. And I would, yeah. And I, I'm happy to to uh, hear that you were nominated for chair. That sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and Emma, would you accept a nomination for chair? Um, I don't want. <laughs> I really love being on the commission and love being vice chair, but I think being the chair is a little bit more than I can handle. handle. <laughs> but thank you. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> thank you for the nomination. And I'm happy if anyone else would like to serve or be considered um as as chair anyone have, have anything linda anything kathy rodney no thank you council labarge you might uh, already have your hands full with uh city council <laughs> that's a good point is can a counselor be a chair i'm just wondering is that is that something I, no i think that's the same uh, problem oh, no. you're running to jeremy yeah. Oh, yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All right, cool. Linda or Kathy, Rodney, would you be interested in being chair or vice chair? No, I think I think that you're good, <laughs> Amy. It seems to be unanimous. Yeah, I know, but I <laughs> I think Amy just came out and stated she was mentioning to Rodney. Did we get an answer from him? Hmm. Rodney, I don't think he heard it. No, no. So why don't you phrase the question again, Marianne? It'll come up with the captions. Yeah, I think Amy, want to question Rodney again, please? Yes. Rodney, are you interested in being yes. the chair or the vice chair of the commission? Does he understand, Claire? Yeah, I think he's, I think he does. Yes, that's it. That's it. Yes, you but. Are. Rod Rodney, they're asking if you would like to be considered for chair or vice chair. Rodney? Do you understand? You. Are you are you interested in being nominated? Me. Yes, you. Perfect. For chair. I am a member. You are since a member. 2005. Right. But the question is, are you interested in being nominated as chair or vice chair? Uh no. <laughs> I think he got it. No, no. thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> okay. At least in, in due, right. And at least in due respect, we get the opportunity. Oh, definitely, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Rodney. <laughs> okay, awesome. So we have our nominations. And then the um the the election will be ne at the next meeting. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Okay, so next on the agenda is the notice of award for um, CH3 grant for Terrace Trails. Do you want to yeah. talk about that? Yeah, so the short of this is the CHI grant, but that CHI, it stands for Community Health Inclusion Index, so C-H-I-I. And so Court Klein in my office he wrote a proposal, um, and um, and we were awarded a grant to make the terrace trails. So that's the trail network behind Pomeroy Terrace um, to make those soft surface trails accessible. Um, it's not all the trails, uh, probably, because um, there's quite a network back there, um, if you've ever been back there. And so we'll be having a um, public meeting sometime in January, like a site visit to just gather input. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll let you all know when that happens. We'll reach out to Stravros and other, other community members. Mm -hmm. um, but for the people that cannot go to that site visit, we'll likely to have um, like another meeting with the Disability Commission after that meeting to discuss and if any questions come up. So as soon as I know when that meeting is, I will let the Disability Commission know. But it's uh, like a 18 or $21,000 grant to make those trails accessible. Thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm. Okay, and um, let's see. So, follow up on the Main Street redesign was on next on the agenda. Yes. Um. Um, counselor. Yes, as you know, all nine counselors supported this. 
I was the number one sponsor, and we had Jim Nash, mm -hmm. Councilor Nash, our council president, mm -hmm. as a sponsor, and also a sponsor, Karen Foster. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot of research, a lot of hard work was done on that ordinance. Mm -hmm. We had heard mm -hmm. people who were not for it, business people not for it, business people that were for it, and people who were for it in the city. We had several, several meetings. There is a little history to this. I was elected in um, nomination mm -hmm. in 1998, along with Councilor Bill Dwight and also former Councilor um, Phil Sullivan. In 1999, we were inaugurated. In 2005 is when that was the beginning, the beginning of what now is going to happen to Main Street. So from 2005 on, mm -hmm. right up into 2022, mm -hmm. massive sustainability was all put together. I think it was in 2015, I think, mm -hmm. Keith, I don't have our um, ordinance in front of us of what was mm -hmm. dealing with sustainability in Northampton. Wider sidewalks, mm -hmm and also making it accommodate accommodation for people with disabilities, sidewalks, the widths of them, mm -hmm. right down the line. This did not happen overnight. We are looking at many, many years of having this happen. And this is what we've got, a huge patch package, new history. A lot of people don't like changes at all. But this change is going to be unbelievable, unbelievable. It's going to accommodate mm -hmm. what needs to be accommodated, which is bicyclists who have the rights to be on a road, no matter where you are. Mm -hmm. And that is critical. Mm -hmm. The bicycle law was approved last year of having the rights to be able to mm -hmm. access on roads. So I think with the bicycle lanes, and also mm -hmm. the widening of the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. We're looking at our businesses. Mm -hmm. I had a lengthy talk mm -hmm. with the fire chief before he retired, like four months before he retired, of voices not hearing from our fire chief. He worked, and he told me directly, worked very, very closely with the consultants and also the mass DOT. They made changes on that so that the fire trucks, the cruisers, and um, ambulances would be able to mm -hmm. access with the two, two lanes. That was the critical point right there. So there's a lot of history of this. I'm proud of this. And talking with um, former counselors who also were involved from two years to four years right down mm -hmm. the line. So this did not happen mm -hmm. overnight. I also am proud of our mayor, which Keith, I think you you know also. Already we're reaching out. We have the Chamber of Commerce highly involved with our mayor and a team, mm -hmm. which will be business people also, who we're all gonna be putting their heads together on each phase of the reconstruction to help our businesses help our businesses, which is critical, critical. So that's the history of that. So like I said, I'm very, very proud. And I'm very proud that the Disability mm -hmm. Commission um, sent the letter and so forth. That was um, that was awesome. So I wanna thank you for that. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Thank you, Counselor. You're welcome. <clears throat> And yeah, I, I got the opportunity. I, I I attended the council meeting over Zoom, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was cool to hear Alan Wolf, the chief of staff and the mayor. He like he read our letter at the council meeting, and and um, it seemed to be well received by the other councilors. So I was happy to attend that. Hi, Marilyn. Hello. Hi, Marilyn. Miss you. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, anybody else have any thoughts on the on the discussion on Main Street before we move on? 
Okay. Um, next, we were going to talk about uh, discuss the sidewalk assessment. Oh, I'm sorry, Rodney. Did you say something? I thought I heard Rodney. Okay. Um, so um, we were going to discuss the sidewalk assessment and prioritization. Um, Keith, would you like to lead by with anything? No, I was hoping you all, uh, I, I did some, just look at the history, uh, but I'm curious to know what you all are thinking. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I feel um, from the experiences that, that I've had so far with learning about how it works, how the process works, um, I do feel like there should be more uh, a, a less barriers with between mm -hmm. disabled right. people, uh, people that are affected by the, the dangerous sidewalks and the city government it should be, I think that it should be more possible for us to add to the list mm -hmm. of, of sidewalks that they currently have. And for us to get, when there's, uh, when we point out the trouble spots, mm -hmm. we should, we should be getting some more, a better response from, from um, DPW and the, and the government right. about that. <clears throat> Council of the Barge. Right. Also, Jeremy, you said you watched the city <laughs> council meeting and we were talking about the redesigning of Main Street. Oh, yeah. I think that as far as sidewalks on Main Street, <laughs> it's a very positive thing. Uh, I, I definitely am not. I'm also, not doing too, Jeremy, I brought it up in regards to people with disabilities <laughs> with sidewalks. And I also have invited the mayor to come over to Florence Heights and look at that sidewalk, how deplor it, deplorable it is, because it's not ADA accessible. For 15 years, we've been trying. And she had stated that, she, you know, she shook her head. So it's very critical that she comes to see what's happening here with people with disabilities. I agree, yeah. And perhaps we could invite the mayor to mm -hmm. check out other spots that, that um, are, are troubled or mm -hmm. dangerous spots. Um, Jacob? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Labarge. Um, I think the more attention, the better. Um, I did ask um, <clears throat> my representative uh, to send some information about, um, I'm blank, <laughs> Alex Jarrett, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. Send me what because he, he was the one who had originally told me there was a budget for sidewalks and so he sent me the document i'm sure many of you are familiar with it but so in the um budget there are two hundred thousand dollars i guess a year allocated to sidewalk repair i'm not sure that any of that is given preference to ada accessible issues um and so there's a list of the sidewalks that have been fixed yes Main Street, Pleasant Street, State Street, Strong Avenue, mm -hmm. uh, Pine Street, Meadow Street, Warfield Place. And I don't know how comprehensive that list is, but I'm not sure that it, you know, overlaps mm -hmm. with the streets or the sidewalks that are identified in that Alta mm -hmm. consulting groups, um, you know, measure of the, of the lousy sidewalks, mm -hmm. the sidewalks that need repair. And I'm wondering if it would be, if there is a way to try to, um, ask DPW to give preference, um, you know, with those existing funds. I don't know if that's going to be possible or, you know, it's sort of like, well, working with what we have versus trying to bring in more money, but are we, are we doing the best we can with what we have currently? I, I just don't know. Rodney, you raise your hand. Go ahead, Rodney. Yes. I'm going to know if the it's it's of the set work that needs to be repaired. I'd like to know if there's a list of the sidewalks that need to be repaired. What I've found, Rodney, is this list and um that came out of a an assessment in 2018. Exactly. And it has like a map of the city and it has all the sidewalks have different ratings. Um, I um, will try to okay. put a link to it in the chat. We're going to find the map. So Rodney says, okay, where can I find the map? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll try and get a link to it in the chat. Or maybe I can share the document. Yeah, um, Keith, is it possible for you to screen share the um, assessment? I can, it's just gonna take me a minute to find it. That's what you want. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. Right, because it was done in 2018 and you're looking at over six, seven years going on here. Exactly, yeah. Um, Amy? Um, so I'm curious um, who decides within city government which sidewalks get allocated that money annually? So is it DPW and the director of DPW who decides? Or, you know, like, what is that process? So that's one question. And another question is, um, how much of a dialogue kind of, uh, you know, piggybacking off of what you said earlier, Jeremy, is how much of a dialogue is there between the Disability mm. Commission and city government about the state, <laughs> the states of the sidewalks in, mm. in the city, so that there's you know, working knowledge within the disability community that gets passed on to the the powers that be so that um, they're well informed of the lived experiences of uh, yeah. citizens in the town. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And uh, yeah, and, and I would even I would like to add that the people that uh, when they assess these sidewalks, they were they were pushing an empty wheelchair around. Um, with no per a, a, a wheelchair with no person in it, uh, which I don't find I, I don't understand how that could be accurate information if you don't have a person who who actually uses a wheelchair telling you what is safe and what is not safe. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there should be a new assessment, especially when the city hires consultants, which we do frequently. They're not cheap. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. You know, and I have to agree with what I just heard you say. Do they actually understand mm -hmm. people with disabilities in wheelchairs or even not in wheelchairs? Right, people with canes and, and just any mobility issue at all. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any sense of what it costs to repair sidewalks? Mm. No. I don't, I but- think, like, I think you can get that information right from um, our director, Donna Lascaglia. Mm. So I was also wondering if there's some, if perhaps there's a, like a, a, a lower level of repair to at least cover up some of the glaring holes and obstacles rather than have every project be about redoing the sidewalk entirely. Uh -huh. um, and maybe there's, you know, that might not be on DPW's radar, but that would go probably some way to helping people with excessive, you know, overcome accessibility issues if the certain patches have the holes mm -hmm. filled and the cracks smoothed out. And I, I just don't know enough about you know, asphalt to I know. know if that's a good idea or not. Yeah, I think those are really important questions. Maybe we could invite Donna um, to a meeting with specific questions about like, what are the plans for the sidewalk budget for 2024? Like, some of these uh, more specific questions about like how much does it actually cost to repave mm -hmm. both like more permanently and temporarily like a, a, you know a sidewalk or a mm -hmm. corner or one block of sidewalk mm -hmm. um, because yeah, I feel like we've just been talking about this for such a long time and it's sort of, I feel like we're stuck mm -hmm. in this place of like, 
the how do we actually communicate with the people like the powers that be and and the right powers that be to address the sidewalk issue I completely agree. Um, Councilor LaBarge? Yes, and just a reminder, during the COVID, we're going on three years because we do have an uptick going on in the city. Mm. We were 19 to 20 employees who had left the DPW. We are up to 31 right now. It could have changed, maybe it's 30. But we've been in deep trouble here. And our DPW staff are working tirelessly to try to keep up with whatever is going on with our roads, water mains, right down the line. 31. That's yeah, how so critical our department is. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. I just talked with um, the director, Donna Lascalia. This was like about a month and a half ago or so. She was telling me that they were looking for people who had pickup trucks with plows to just do the side streets. We're okay with the, the, the bigger streets. Okay, the ones that we use our bigger streets throughout the city. Route 66, right down the line. King Street, those are our bigger streets that we're looking at. The city handles that. What we do is contract with all the side streets throughout the city. So anyways, we're in trouble here and we're not the only DPW in trouble either. I have another mm -hmm. resident that's an executive director to another DPW and the same thing three years ago, couldn't hire. They went up on their salaries. We even gone up on their salaries. So we went from 19 to 20 now to 31. It's awful. 31 people working there? No. Oh, well, sorry, what is have. that? We're what? minus. Oh, I see. Okay. 31 yes. vacancies? We're critical. 31 vacancies, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 31. Yeah, I have heard the staff about, about that, that and, and that's probably a, another, that sounds like another big obstacle here. Yep. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts, Counselor, on like, how we could how we could somehow encourage more people to to work to, or encourage more people to work there or get more um, get improve the staffing in some way. You're asking me to. Oh, I'm just asking your opinion. If you if you had any thoughts on like how we, how that could ha how it could happen. Like I just stated. Yeah. Our director has already increased the salary. She has to go by what the laws are. Okay, for hiring right down the line. Like I have people in Ward 6 who do and own companies of plowing and landscaping and that. If they own a company, they cannot do it. Because if they get a call, they got to go right out. Mm. So if they own their own business, that makes it difficult when they have their own clients to do. So I've already right. given a couple of names, so we'll see what happens out of that. But okay. I just wanted everybody to know that we're not in good shape. Thank you. Yeah, that's so the important. people that are working right now, they have been working tirelessly, and I have to commend them. Mm -hmm. um, um, Linda, you had your hand up? Yeah. You know, uh, I have a sidewalk in front of my house, and I'm responsible for clearing that sidewalk when it snows. Yeah. And the other, uh, about last month, I was at a book club on Chest Chestnut Street, I think it is. Yeah. Well, that street is just awful. I mean, the sidewalk was covered with a thick layer of acorns. It was almost impossible to walk around there without killing yourself. Uh -huh. so why shouldn't the owner of the house that the sidewalk's in front of be responsible for at least upkeeping the sidewalk sweeping it or something to make it a little bit more manageable like we are with snow. Mm. No? I think that's a reasonable idea. I Also on Chestnut, there are, sometimes the bushes are coming into the sidewalk. That's mm -hmm. right. 
Mm -hmm. Isn't that illegal? It is. I'm too bashful to tell them to trim their bushes, though. Yeah. So yes. Maybe I'll put an anonymous call into the bush police. The property <laughs> owner is um, supposed to maintain, uh, keep the bushes so vertically, 90 degrees up from the yeah. sidewalks. At I believe it's at six feet. Um, so that's an enforcement issue. Um, and really, DPW is... Uh, as I said, they're staffing, but there needs to be a complaint. Um, and so there, there's a process, but I think there was a staffing issue too. Yes, there is. Oh, Council, you, you wow. have something to say? Yes, I do have something to say. Keith is correct about what he just said. Mm -hmm. As a counselor, I've had many complaints of a situation, even some of my seniors who are coming off of acre brook trying to get on Kurtzbert road and there's the bushes right at the end of the street you can't see the traffic as a counselor i go up to the resident first i give them the opportunity okay before i have to call bpw and they do they get out there and trim it so to me if there is a problem like that i think it depends on a counselor and how they want to do it. I didn't have mm -hmm. to bother DPW at all because I asked them to do it because it was a safety issue. And if they say, no, I'm not going to do it. If it's on city property, the city can come in and they can trim it. They can trim it. That I do know because I had to do that with one resident. Mm the sidewalk as far as sweeping it i can't answer to that i've never had anybody complain about mm -hmm. sidewalks because i don't have hardly mm -hmm. many new sidewalks in ward six jacob I, I wonder if part of this particular issue is just people don't know um you know mm -hmm. that it's important um and I don't know how to sort of regularly communicate with the re with residents that it's important we keep our sidewalks accessible. Um, I feel like, you know, we live in a community of, of generally good hearted people that certainly don't want it, in, you know, intentionally impede access, but they might just not be aware. Um, so I don't know. Right. If there's some method of uh you know an email blast <laughs> or some, some sort of public service announcement or something right. like that yeah yeah rodney go ahead go ahead rodney speaking of the and then that's the birth speaking of, of the report of all the sidewalks. That's when the press in 2018. The last one was published in 2018. But I second the idea that the report should be updated every year. Because 2018 is a long time ago. Because 2018 is such a long time ago. It should be updated every year. Up to 2024. Thank you, Rodney. I completely agree with you. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, sorry, Kathy. Yeah, going back to the public service announcement idea. weren't weren't you, Jeremy and Keith, working on a public service announcement about clearing sidewalks last winter? I mean, I yeah, we 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 got we did. Uh, Keith took some footage of me like with my wheelchair in the snow, but um, we never. Fin it never got finished or something. Keith, do you I mean, have any thoughts on that? I just wondered if that could be finished and and if there could be, you know, seasonal ones even, you know, like one for the for the springtime about trimming your bushes and one for the fall about clearing leaves or something. You know, just sort of a series of them, if that one could ever be finished. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And I, I'd be happy to participate in that. Uh so <laughs> briefly, uh yes, we that video is specifically for clearing our sidewalks about the fact that they have 24 hours after the snow stops. 
Uh, but I do just want to kind of focus us. We can we can go come back to this, but I do want to focus this. Uh -huh. this, was specific, this part of the agenda was specific about sidewalk assessment prioritization and how to do that. Uh, it seems like we're kind of veering off track here. Um, I just want to mark that, um, you know. Um, well, well um, Rodney's recent comment was not off track. He said that he thinks that we should have a new assessment every year. I agree with that. Um, <laughs> so, Keith, I was wondering, do you think that we could invite Donna to the next meeting? Uh, we certainly can. The next meeting is January. Yes, I think so. Um, Rodney says, I think that's a good idea. It would be very helpful. It would be very helpful. Donna, come to the meeting. To have Donna come to yes, the yes, meeting. I can ask me different questions. So we can all ask her different questions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. I, I think uh, January 9th, I don't know uh, her availability, but um, I think definitely it would be helpful to kind of have some questions ahead of time um, so that, I mean, some of the stuff Donna's, you know, she knows, but some of the more detailed stuff, it might just be helpful to kind of prepare her for what we're going to talk about. Maybe that's something um, we could all work on before the next meeting. We could, like, email you questions that we have. Does that sound good, Keith? Yeah. Okay. Um, the sooner the better. I mean, June, January 9th comes up quick. Um, maybe. And, yeah. All right, Keith. Um, maybe, maybe you could just offer her, like, the next three meeting, like, you know. Yeah, like, whenever she's available. Yeah, we're not trying yeah. to yeah. Gotcha. In yeah. intrude upon her time. Okay, cool. I think that's a good plan. Um, Amy? Um, could we also reach out, I mean, maybe to the mayor, um, to, I, I'd love for the commission to start a dialogue with city government about this conversation that we're having so that you know, that administration knows what's going on and what the concerns are with the Disability Commission and see if we can establish some kind of avenue for dialogue so that we're sharing this information um, so that it's not just <sighs> in, a bubble, in our clear. little bubble. You know, and yeah. I, I, and I, I mean, I love the idea of um, Director uh, Lascalia coming to our meeting and we can prepare a bunch of questions and get more information from her. Mm -hmm. But I I think kind of uh, that other um, avenue might be good to foster. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. So Amy, are you suggesting maybe inviting the mayor to a meeting also? Is that what you're suggesting? No, I don't think so. Oh, sorry. Well, can you? Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I wasn't clear. I was just trying to get like, remote, um, you know. yeah, I was, I guess I was imagining um, a few representatives from this group asking okay. to meet with the mayor about, you know, and I mean, we could write a letter and say, hey, this is what we've been talking about. These are our concerns. Um, you know, we could start with that and then ask if she'd be willing to meet with some of us to, you know, go into more detail that I guess I was imagining that kind of a conversation. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's a great idea. Councilor LaBarge. Right. Um, Keith is absolutely correct. There is a policy when say like with city service on appointments and evaluations mm -hmm. and so forth like that. If us counselors ask to have a department head come in we do the questions ahead of time and send them to the mayor for that department head so i, I wanted you to know amy there is a, a, a procedure here and i could see why oh does marianne does that mean that we should send our questions to keith and then he 
decides what to send to the mayor? Right. You would just send the questions to Keith and he'll send it to whoever you we want to okay. have them. Good. That's in due respect of your department heads. Okay. Um Jacob. Um <clears throat> Curious to know if, like, what is the process? I know that we're sort of talking about that now, but, you know, from basically from start to finish to to see some sidewalk upgrades, like, does it, I understand that we are, you know, this group is a advisory council, but ultimately would it have to go in front of city council to vote to allocate funds to the DPW to like how procedurally would it actually happen? I'm just curious. That, that would be up to Donna Lascalia and the mayor of finding the funds. DPW is allocated so much throughout the state just like the roads right down the line. So I think everything is with Donna and the mayor, where they can find that money. And I think if you can recall, Keith, I did request that we need to look at our state reps and our senators to help us out to get more money. That's the big problem here. We don't have a lot of money. Okay. Amy? So, um, Councilor Labarge, I have follow up questions for you. Um, no. So, uh, multiple. Um, so, with your, with your last comment, are you suggesting that the Disability Commission reach out to Representative Sabadosa and Senator Comerford? Yes. Or is that something that the mayor would do? Anybody can. I've Anybody. called her myself. Okay. To help us. <laughs> okay. And then um, follow up question from earlier. Um, it would be great, Amy. Yeah. So if you become the chair in January of talking about this, about the commission getting together with Keith, the ADA coordinator, and saying what is happening here to our city with lack of funding and that we need to help the people with disabilities in our city with the sidewalks. Yeah. That's, I would do that. Okay. Um, thank you. And so then follow-up question from, two, you know, two comments ago. Um, and talk with the mayor. Okay. Um, you, you had said that the questions, our questions for Donna Lascalia will go to Keith and Keith will send them to the mayor, and then the mayor will give them to Donna Lascalia. Was your comment um, to preclude us from contacting the mayor about this concern directly and to write a letter and fill her in on our conversation and ask for um, dialogue? Yes, you could do oh, that, right, Keith? So sorry, you think that should not happen? Or it's okay for that to happen. I was unclear with. To what? I, I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, better. Okay, sorry, I'll come closer. Um, do you think, do you support us writing a letter to the mayor yeah. to fill her in on this conversation? Yes. So okay. that she knows the concerns here. Definitely. And ask Definitely. for dialogue somehow. Okay. Yes, I have to okay. Okay, I couldn't tell if you were saying no, we shouldn't do that, or if you thought that was okay. Now thank you're you. hearing my voice. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jeremy, I think Rodney. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, I was just about to. Say, yeah, Rodney, go ahead. Rodney, go ahead. Okay. It would be a good idea for me to quit acting. To kids about CSD. It'd be a good idea for me to write a letter to Keith about deaf CSD. 
Okay. Yes, what? I name of the city. Oh, oh, about the name of the street. Okay, what's the name of the street? It's Hamilton. It's in the South Street. It's near South Street. Okay. But my name is South Street. For many years, that street was very bumpy. Rodney, Rodney, can you say the name of the street? Does anybody know what, what street he's talking about? What's the name of the street? Do you understand me? I need to find out what's the name of the street. Okay, talking about South Street. South Street, okay. From from South Street to Lathrop. Lathrop? To Lathrop. To Lathrop. Okay. It's a very bumpy street. They have to fill so many potholes. They have to fill so many potholes. <laughs> it's been like that for 33 years. It's had potholes for a long time. Damaged my car. Damaged my car. I met a report. Asking. Bernard Hamilton. To reimburse me. For the damage. On my. So Northampton has been Sorry, I'm not asking a question. Should I write a letter to Keith about this? I will do that tomorrow. How can I put the way to the hunk? So you'll write a letter to Keith. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you, Rodney. Good. Anyone else have any thoughts on this discussion? Amy, it looks like you have your hand up. I thank you. Um, Jacob, I, I know you're not on the commission, but are you willing to submit questions mm -hmm. to Keith as well? It seems like you have several, and that would be fantastic. I think that would be great. And I did apply to join the commission. Oh, that's great. Great, great. to hear. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Uh, but I'll submit some. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for applying, Jacob. Happy to, yeah. Cool. Well, I, I think this is a very important conversation. It might be the, the most important conversation it's we've a had. Huge one. Because, yeah, exactly. It's, it affects everybody. And I feel like it's one of the reasons we're all on the commission, probably. You know, so, yeah. So let's continue the conversation. That's and it. I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, where did we leave off with that? Uh, I just want to make sure we. Have are, are we going to invite Donna to a meeting, or what do we just do? We decide on any the next step. Emma, I saw, I saw you nod your head. Do you mind just? Yeah, no, me? I definitely think that we should invite Donna, if not, um, to the next meet. You know, one of right, the next like meetings. yeah, exactly, like whenever she's available, basically. Right. Cool. Um, and, Councilor Labarge. Right, that is critical. Whenever she is available. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want to, you know, I'm not, we're not trying to intrude upon any anybody's time. <clears throat> okay. So then um, the next item is just um, basically it, to ask if there's any other business that we have not anticipated. Yes, that I we... do. Okay, go for it, please. Yes. I want to thank our ADA coordinator, Keith Bernoy. In regards to sending us the email on December 6, 2023, on the new resources for commissions on disability, every commissioner right now got this. Have you read it? 
Have all of you read what Keith sent us on December 6th? It's very interesting. I believe I did, yes. I, yeah. yeah. Do you see what's involved in it? How to start a commission on disabilities, important laws. That's a critical one, and I looked at that one. For commissions on disability to know what you can do and what you cannot do. It's amazing. And also, to another important factor on it, and here we have a resident living off over on Chestnut Street. He probably would be an excellent candidate for that one to join the statewide independent living council. And that's appointed um, in Massachusetts from somebody in the state house, isn't it, Keith? Doesn't that come right out of the state house that um, a group there that appoint people to be on it? I, I don't know, sorry. It's really good. So maybe Keith, you could also send that to the resident that's here tonight talking with us about people with disabilities and about you know how and what the procedure is if he read this it's very interesting i can send it to, to jacob yes yes thank you and thank you keith Okay. Is um are there any other business not anticipated? Okay. Is no, there no. Oh, sorry. Uh, Rodney. He's no? just saying no. There's no mm -hmm. business. Right. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So, is there a motion to adjourn the Move meeting? To adjourn. I second that motion. Adjourn. Adjourn. Awesome. Well, uh, it's been a pleasure, everybody. everybody. Have wonderful holidays and be you safe. You too. Happy holidays.